surrendered to God? Are you living surrendered to God? And I just want to do a bit of confession time and let you know that, you know, even as a pastor, I catch myself from time to time and I notice I'm not really living surrendered to God. I've given my heart to Jesus and I believe I'm headed for heaven, but there's a tendency to flip back to living for my own agenda. And the crazy thing is my own agenda is looking more and more godly and because that's the kind of life that I'm getting into as I follow Jesus. Nevertheless, I can be doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. Are you with me? And it's a real hard thing. Nobody else would know. And so I want to challenge you with this thought this morning. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. What are we to give to God? Our bodies, our whole lives, really. You give him your body, he's got the works, doesn't he? Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The pattern of this world is to give your body to what? Yourself. That's what the world would have us do. Just, that's the natural way of things. You just serve yourself. Um, but the Bible throws down something completely different and says, give your life over to God. I want to um, share with you a little testimony of at the beginning of this year, Jess and I made a decision that we're going to spend way more time with God. And so we did a Bible reading thing. It's the first time in 10 years of marriage. I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. We're now reading the Bible through at the same time together. And it's great. We can talk about the chapter that we've read or whatever. But um, I, I caught, it was all particularly during the start of the year when we were doing that fast, I really had this sense, wow, I'm really putting God first in my life. I'm spending a lot of time with him, and I'm, and I'm remembering that my focus is supposed to be Jesus. Um, and that's what I'm supposed to be living for. And I feel like I am putting him in charge again. And it was like that first love. Remember, it says in Revelation, don't forget your first love. And if you've been a Christian for a while, you'll all know that you, you remember times where you're totally excited about Jesus and God, and it's the biggest thing ever. And then, it's, and then it's easy for it to fade into this kind of, yeah, God is good, amen, brother. Um, but it's just not as exciting or full on as it, as it has been at different other times in your life. And when I made that decision with Jess at the start of the year, I realized, hey, I'm getting back into that first love zone where everything I do is all connected to Jesus. But then, probably within two or three weeks, I found myself like in the last week, do, I've got my commitment to spend X amount of time reading this amount of the Bible or whatever, but I found myself thinking subconsciously, let me get this over and done with so I can get on with my day. Are you with me? Now let's listen to what I was telling myself. Let me get this over and done with. First of all, that doesn't sound like a great attitude, does it? So I can get on with my day. Did you hear that? And so I've come up with this thought based on my own experience. Whose day is it? Is it your day or is it God's day? And I, I guess I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I wasn't intentionally becoming wicked. This was not some big plan to turn my back on God. This is just life. Remember the parable of the sower with the four different types of seed? And the third type of seed fell on thorny ground where it did grow up, but these thorns grew up and were choking it. And what did that represent in the Bible? The busyness of life, the deceitfulness of money, and the worries of the world. Those three things. Isn't that interesting? The busyness of life, the deceitfulness of money, and the worries of the world. And so it's not intentional, friends. We can drift away from having that first love by accident. And I guess all I'm saying is it's a call to have a reality check for where you're at. I know I've needed one within about three weeks of making my big commitment to be close to God again. And so I, I, just, I guess I'm just realizing how easy it is to... The devil do anything to get us just slightly off-center of putting Jesus as number one. What was, I, what was my day going to be busy with? Helping people, preparing sermons, visiting, praying with someone all holy and wonderful activities, right? But the point is, I was doing it with me at the head 
rather than with Jesus at the head. I'm sure whether you're a school teacher or a cleaner or a parent, your activities are just as holy, just as important. But I want to challenge you to surrender your life to God in the morning. Spend enough time with him to, so that you get to the point where you go, this really is your day today, God. And I'm willing to do whatever you want and surrender your agenda to him. Now, here's the thing. I think that nine times out of ten, God will get you to do the same agenda that you had planned anyway, but now you're doing the right thing for the right reason rather than the, wrong, uh, the right thing for the wrong reason. And the motivation in your heart is everything. And occasionally, God will say, you know what? As good as those things are, I've got something different planned for you today. He might give you a nudge first thing in the morning, or because you're open to it, he surprises you with what it's going to be during the day, and, um, but you're open and ready rather than being irritated that your plans are getting interrupted. So it's just a call to sincerely say, Lord, help me really have that first love and be surrendered to you. Let's pray about it. Father in heaven, please help us to have that first love. Help us to really be surrendered and not kid ourselves because we live godly-looking lives, and me included. And so, Lord, help us to genuinely start the day with you and stick with you all through the day, every day. We need your help for this. We know that those weeds are trying to choke us. Worries, busyness, money, whatever. Help us to keep our eyes on you, Jesus. Restart that first love. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God some more. Let's have our worship team come on up.